Hello, I'm here to share with you some of my favorite chocolate hacks. Now these are simple techniques, well maybe simple for me, but fairly easy to execute, but have the absolute wow factor when they're presented. First step, we're creating all chocolate decorations, is to temper the chocolate, because I'm sure you're using chocolate with cocoa butter and not vegetable fat. I've melted the chocolate in a plastic bowl till I've got 50% liquid, 50% solid chocolate. Then I'm just gonna simply stir it. So you can see there, I've still got some lumps in there, but I've got some liquid. So the liquid is gonna be warm enough to melt the solid chocolate. Once it's all melted, it should be tempered. Now, if it feels hot to touch, it's probably not tempered. And I'm gonna show you how we do a quick test to see if it's tempered or not. Lots of vigorous stirring. If it's not all melted, but it's very close, you need some additional heat. Either use a hairdryer or a paint stripper gun, which is dry heat, not adding any moisture to gently warm it up. Remember, don't use glass, always a plastic bowl. Once all the chocolate's melted and you thoroughly mixed it, we're gonna do a test to see if it's tempered or not. How we know if the chocolate is tempered or not is by dipping some baking paper into the chocolate and leaving it at room temperature. It'll take five minutes for dark chocolate to set, seven minutes for milk chocolate, and 10 minutes for white. That is if your room temperature is below 24 degrees Celsius. Much above 24 degrees Celsius, it's gonna be very challenging for the chocolate to set at room temperature. Place this on an ambient surface, not anything too cold. Then we're gonna wait the five minutes to see if it's set to know it's tempered. If it's not tempered, we need to add some more chocolate in, but because the chocolate is already colder, it's a good idea to add grated chocolate in if you can, so it's gonna melt very quickly. Now I've got the chocolate test here that is set, so I've given it the five minutes. It will never be shiny when it's on baking paper because baking paper is porous. So chocolate will only be shiny if you contract it against a polished surface. But the fact that I can pick that off, doesn't have any white lines on it, and it actually has a snap, means that we're ready to go. Now I have an acetate here. This is a firm plastic. This is what I mean about getting a shine on chocolate. By using a sheet of plastic, it's gonna ensure as the chocolate contracts, it's gonna have a really shiny polished surface. Now you can get acetate from stationery shops and also art supply stores. This might be hard for you to see. I've got two sheets. This is a big sheet, it comes like this and I've just cut it in half. The beauty of the acetate, as long as you don't mark it too much, you can use it over and over and over again. Now keep in mind with this particular technique, you can do any sort of chocolate, white, milk or dark. The tempering technique is exactly the same. You can also put a little bit of shimmer or metallic powder on the acetate before you pour the chocolate on if you're wanting to. I haven't told you what we're making yet, have I? That's a bit awkward. We're actually making chocolate curls. This is a simple and effective way of making chocolate curls with a plastic sheet. If you're not great with a knife or a scraper and creating them on the bench top, and the beauty of these chocolate curls is they're gonna be shiny. I find it easiest to spread the chocolate with an angled palette knife, so it has a little step down here. We angle the palette knife slightly and we spread it onto the sheet. As I said, you might not be able to see the sheet too clearly. Don't go backwards and forwards too many times because it'll inhibit the chocolate's ability to contract. Once we've got it there, I hold down one side, pick up the other side and I give it a tap and that's gonna level out this side a little bit. So now we're gonna let that set. The beauty of working with coverture chocolate with cocoa butter is when this just sets, we still have time to manipulate the chocolate and shape it. So don't go anywhere because dark chocolate sets the fastest. But the reason I'm using dark chocolate is because it's also the shiniest because it has the most cocoa butter in it. And cocoa butter is what makes the chocolate contract. So we're just starting to set, just waiting. Have a knife handy, ready to go. And we're gonna start the center. You have to work fairly quickly with this. And if you want to start with a smaller bit of plastic, you can. Now I'm just going to even off the edges. 
Make sure it's set enough that when you actually cut through, it's gonna hold. If it's still a little bit liquid, it will run back into itself. Then we start in the center and just curving the knife slyly, always making a point in the center. We just come around to the outside. So going right around. If the chocolate's starting to set, you might find yourself just making the curls a little bit bigger as you go around, so it goes a little bit faster. Now, this is the beauty of coverture chocolate. That's still flexible now for me to actually curl it. How tight you curl it will determine how tight the chocolate curls actually are, but I think that's okay. Just a little bit of sticky tape there. And that's gonna go into the fridge for approximately five minutes. Then I'm gonna let it sit at room temperature, as long as your room temperature is not above 24 degrees Celsius, for about an hour before unrolling them. In fact, if you're gonna create these chocolate curls for a dessert or a cake, leave them in the plastic right until you're putting them onto the product. That way they'll be exceptionally shiny, ready for you to serve. The chocolate curls haven't really had enough time. They probably need another hour or so. We can see here with the chocolate, that we've still got some parts of the chocolate that haven't fully contracted. So when I peel the plastic off, this part isn't gonna be as shiny as this part here. So when you see that, give them a little bit more time before you actually take the plastic off, a little bit short of time. So I'm gonna show you the technique, but this is probably a good example to show you what'll happen on these bits here that haven't fully contracted. You can put it back in the fridge, but don't put it in the fridge for too long because you can get sugar bloom, which is where the sugar dissolves and recrystallizes. Here we go. Now what I love about these decorations, one, they're really shiny. They'll be slightly different shapes. They look fantastic on top of a dessert. Or a large cake if you're making a centerpiece. They're all different shapes and sizes, but you can control how thin they are, how long they are, by how you actually cut them. You can keep them in the plastic until you're ready to use them for as long as possible. And then unmold them just before placing them on your finished dessert or cake. I love this next decoration. I always say these are really easy, but I completely understand that I've been working with chocolate for a very long time. So for me, it's quite simple, but I think these are achievable. Now I'm gonna use a paper piping bag, which we have a video on our channel on how to make these, but you can just simply spoon the chocolate onto the baking paper for this particular decoration. I like to call these chocolate eyelashes. We've got some strips of baking paper here and I've taken a vase or you can take a jug, something that's got a slight curve that'll enable us to slide these into after we've finished the decoration. Chocolate will contract anyway to give us a slight curve. This is just gonna give us a helping hand. I have the chocolate here that is tempered. We do have in-depth videos on tempering if you'd like to watch that. So we fill the bag just halfway. Fold away from the seam. Now just cut a small amount off the end of the bag. Take one of our strips, then we pipe in dots. Now only do a couple of dots at the start until you get into a rhythm. Otherwise the chocolate's gonna set before you get a chance to spread it. So dot of chocolate, I'm gonna do three at a time. Teaspoon, now the angle of the teaspoon is important. We hold it straight up and down. Mm -hmm. 
Do another three. So you can go back over it if you're not happy with the first one. And that's because I got lazy and I was angling my spoon. So remember, keep your spoon straight up and down. Now I'm curving them slightly as I go. Now I'm gonna put them into my vase here. To give them just a slight curve. You can let these set at room temperature as long as your room temperature is below 24 degrees Celsius or you can place them in the fridge. If you place them in the fridge they are going to contract and curl up more than they will if you leave them at room temperature. I would leave them on the paper until you're ready to use them on your dessert, cake or simply an ice cream decoration. This technique works with white, milk or dark chocolate or you can colour some white chocolate with some oil soluble colour as well to make some brightly coloured ones. Now, I've been very patient and our eyelashes have set. I know they don't look like much now, but trust me, standing up in some cream on top of a pavlova or a nice dessert or a cake, they look absolutely fantastic. With some chunky nuts, a little bit of icing sugar or some cocoa powder. You can also, if you want to, actually break them in half for some finer decorations. So then you can place them at different angles on a product as well. The beauty of making decorations with just pure chocolate is that they last a very long time. So you can keep those for months as long as they're not heat affected. Now this is my cheats way of spreading chocolate. I'm spreading it on a plastic sheet so the decorations will be shiny but you can also spread it on some baking paper. But keep in mind, the decorations will be dull because baking paper is porous. Got tempered chocolate here and a PVC pipe, which is what we're gonna to use to spread the chocolate. I'm not gonna to put too much chocolate on because it can get quite messy. If you make too big a sheet, it'll start to set before you have time to cut it. So a line of chocolate. Now with the PVC pipe, just gently without putting too much pressure on it, we're gonna use this to spread the chocolate. Now you don't stop in the middle because you'll get a line, we just use one motion across the plastic sheet. So starting here. So we have a small wedge here of chocolate that I'll cut off and remelt. As soon as this starts to set, I can cut out my different decorations. Now you can put some metallic powder on the plastic or on the baking paper if you want to, but often people struggle to spread chocolate evenly and this is gonna solve all of your problems. As soon as it starts to set, start cutting immediately. Now if you're wanting these decorations to stay flat, you need to place them between two flat trays as the chocolate contracts. You can place it in the fridge for five minutes or simply leave them at room temperature, as long as your room temperature is not too hot. At this stage though, you can still curl them. If you wanna give the chocolate decorations a bit of movement, you can actually curl them and tape the plastic. This shows you how simple it is to spread chocolate. I simply cut off the thick piece here with a pair of scissors and I've just cut a scalloped chocolate shape but I've got perfectly flat discs of chocolate and they're all very even. The beauty of having even chocolate as well means that it's going to set evenly either in the fridge or at room temperature so the chocolate's not going to have what we call cooling lines. If you've got thicker parts and thinner parts of chocolate, the thinner part sets first and it pulls away from the thicker part so you may get a crack. You may also get a glossy and matte finish as they're actually setting and contracting differently. Leave this decoration on the plastic until you need it. It's great to have a combination of matte and shine decorations. So this decoration has a matte finish 
and it's great if you've got a really glossy or shiny glaze. It's matte because we're using baking paper, which is porous, which is always going to give us a matte finish on the chocolate. So to give us some texture, I'm going to scrunch it up. Then just smooth it out again. Because the chocolate is matte, I'm going to add a little bit of shimmer with some gold metallic powder. Just when you're using metallics, brush them on, but make sure there's no excess powder. If there's excess powder, your chocolate's not going to adhere to the paper. If you don't have metallic powder, just simply use the baking paper and the chocolate and the texture looks fantastic, either with white milk or dark chocolate. Now this is probably hard to see, but I've just added a little bit of metallic powder to the surface of the paper, just to give a little bit of a shimmer when we pull the chocolate off it. Give myself a little bit of a glitter as well. Now I have chocolate here that is already tempered. I'm going to spread it on. Just make sure that you haven't got any creases that are really protruding or sticking up because it'll cut through the chocolate. We're going to spread this with an angled palette knife. Now I'm not going to do the whole sheet, so I'm just going to do enough to show you the technique. So we've got the chocolate on, using the angled palette knife, just angled slightly, spreading it across. Now your chocolate decoration shouldn't be too thick because you still want people to be able to bite into it and get a beautiful snap. So just thin it out a little bit. Wipe the excess on the side of the bowl. Then we hold one corner down and we give this corner a shake just to level it out. Now you have the option of curling this, of keeping this as it is you don't have to cut this one if you don't want to because it does look quite good if you just break rustic pieces off. Or you can use a cutter, you can cut it into a grid. So many different options with how you can utilize this particular technique as a garnish. Now this is our beautiful textured chocolate. It's going to have a slightly matte finish because we've done it on baking paper. And rather than cut it into individual shapes, I'm just going to peel the paper off and then break it up. So I've got a little bit of a gold shimmer that we can just break into different smaller size pieces, which can look fantastic coming out of a cake or a dessert, even a tart. Even use these as plaques around the side of a cake, it looks really great as well. And what makes it look so pretty is all the different texture that we've created with the paper. Or to simply finish off a bowl of ice cream. Very simple decoration, but very effective. Here's an easy technique and a great garnish. My husband may or may not watch this. So I'm spraying oil on my work surface. So rather than spray it on the marble bench, I'm gonna use a wooden chopping board just in case he's watching. Now I've got some vegetable oil spray. I'm just gonna spray a thin line just on the wood so I can adhere some strips of baking paper. Now make these as wide as as high as you want your feather. Does that make sense? So if you want a longer feather, you'll need to use a bigger knife, but you also need your baking paper to go a little bit higher. 
tempered some white chocolate. We melt it in the microwave till it's half liquid, half solid chocolate. Then vigorously stir it. We only have to temper chocolate that contains cocoa butter, but I know that that's all you're ever gonna use. Now to create my feathers, I'm using a knife. And this knife, the blade is the same shape on both sides, which is important. Because a lot of knives will actually have one side curved and one side straight. And particularly if you've sharpened your knives, you're not gonna have an even curve on both sides. We're using white chocolate, but you can make the feathers really any color that you like. I'm just gonna um, take that spoon out, angle the bowl, dip the knife in, tap it on the surface to pop any air bubbles. Then wipe this edge a little bit to shorten it. Then we press on the surface. Then we pull up and pull up to create a little bit of a stem. Probably didn't help, I had my finger there. Maybe you didn't see that one, so I'll try it without my finger right in the way. Okay, tap to eliminate any air bubbles. Push it to make it a little bit shorter. Then press it down. Then we pull it right the way through. So if you haven't got a stem, just go again. Probably not called a stem. That little stick part at the end of the feather, what's that called? And we just keep going. Till the strip of paper is full, I guarantee you'll break a few feathers. So it's always good to have a few extra. Pull it up and keep going. If your chocolate starts to get a little bit cold, which mine is getting thicker and thicker, I think I'll only get one more before I need to reheat it. You can reheat your chocolate with a hairdryer or a paint stripper gun. This stage, it's hard to reheat it in the microwave because you're pretty likely to overheat it. So I'm going to give that a quick reheat, then I'm going to do a few more feathers till I finish the strip. Last one. Now we can set these at room temperature or you can place them in the fridge, particularly if your room temperature is warm. We can take this one step further if you'd like. I'm going to show you how to make some little nicks in the side of the feathers once they set to make them look like real ridgy didge feathers. The feathers have set, which they will really quickly. White chocolate sets at room temperature in about 10 minutes. So we can peel them off. Trying not to break our little stemmy thing at the bottom. Though I'm not quite sure of the day well. I've got a heat gun here. You can also use a hairdryer or you can warm the knife with a gas torch. We just want to slightly heat the knife, but we don't want it to be too hot. If you've got cold hands like me, you can actually pick the feathers up and we're just making a couple of melted indents in there to make them look a bit more like feathers. So when you do that on the other side, don't match them up. You need a bit of paper towel to wipe your knife before you warm it again, otherwise the chocolate's gonna burn onto the knife. Now, if you have hot hands, put the feather on some baking paper and then just melt it this way. So when you're making the indents, you're going downwards. So on an angle. They're starting to look a little bit like feathers. You can notice that I'm picking out the best ones to show you, can't you? I'm just dodging the ones that don't look so great.
So I've made some of the V's slightly bigger than some of the others, so a little bit more open, so put a little bit more pressure on with the knife. But I think they look really cute and they make a fantastic chocolate garnish. If you enjoyed that episode, you will love my channel. Subscribe today for even more tutorials on chocolate and baking. Best of all, it's free, so get on it.